We back. It's P Valley. <laughs> Let's get into it. Ain't obvious. I just got the check for the positive. 750 for the sound wave to get it processed. Won't stop to that shit. Weighing down my pockets. My main things to my main things. She a blossom. When she ease the pain with the brain, she a doctor. She open up. Then a thing thicker than the plot gets. Swear that shit is awesome. Sight for the optics. Young nigga on top. Nike's all I'm rocking. So that all they see is checks from where the head to where the socks fit. No logo on the bifocal. Flicking no road strips. Won't even show my face until all the shows. But need the cash in advance. Leave them all social. Hey, welcome back to my channel. This is Abby with Abby Reviews. And today I'm going to do a re recap and review for both episodes 5 and 6. That is episodes 5 and 6. 5 and 6. Um, as y'all know, I had to take some time off. Um, I had some family stuff going on. But you know, suffice it to say. Suffice it to say. All of that has resolved itself so everything is good and so we can get back into our regularly scheduled programming so um i'm gonna try and just cliff notes and hit the highlights for both episodes so we start episode five started um there's this lady who is celebrating her divorce at the pink um, she's drunk as hell, high as hell, telling Mississippi that she's the most beautiful woman she's ever seen. She starts drunk crying about her husband leaving her. Mississippi try and give her words and encouragement, but when that doesn't seem to be getting through, her bird just kicks in and she ends up getting a woman for all her money. Um, so we then go to Uncle Clifford in the aftermath with him and a little murder. Low murder is butt ass nigga knocked out on the sofa. Uncle Clifford is trying to get himself together. He's trying to close himself off from the emotions of what just happened. So he puts by so he does that by putting on his armor of his wig and this little silk robe. Um Uncle Clifford goes out and he sees that the drunk lady who was talking to Mississippi, um is um passed out drunk so he gets her up and kicks her out of the club um he then goes out front as he's putting her out and all of the employees is gathered around the door staring at this pink piece of paper it's a foreclosure notice and they have 14 days to pay and or quit or the pink is going up on the auction block now uncle clifford sees this and immediately passes out because it's too much it's too much so, uh, we then go to Autumn, who cannot do the um, cash. The, the transfer places are like, well, you can't do any more transfers. You've reached your limit. And she was like, what do you mean? I thought you could do unlimited transfers. And they explained to her that it stopped. Um, it was just something that they were, a rule that they relaxed um, after the hurricane to help people get on their feet. And as she's talking to the lady about why she can't do transfers, the drunk lady that Uncle Clifford kicked out of the club is driving recklessly and drunk and almost drives her car, her Jeep into the transfer place, freaking out Amber and the lady behind the counter. And the police is chasing her. Um... So Mercedes is getting booked into into um into the jail after she whooped her mama's ass and got arrested. And the man who is booking her in is the same man she stole his wallet at the club. So this is not going well for her. But he put her in the tank with with her mama and they start to going at it again. And he has to tell them, "I need y'all to get the fuck together. I don't know what y'all got going on, but you listen, listen here, sweetie." Listen, this is not what we do it today. So, Clifford goes to see the sheriff about the notice that was put on the door. The sheriff trying to tell him, listen, it's, I need you to do better because you got your, you're not supposed to have, be serving liquor 
at the paint so you can't have your people who've been there come out all drunk and driving crazy and then i got to trace them all over the county i need you to do better and this is when um also when um uncle clifford finds out that mercedes is also is in the tank um So he demands to see Mercedes and he takes him back there to see her. And he was like, well, let me get you. Let me put some stacks on your bail. And she was like, no, don't do that. You got to save all your money to save the pink. Don't put no money on my bail. And so this when Mercedes mama got the nerve to get jazzy with somebody about who they are and what they do. And she calls uh, Clifford Mercedes pimp. And Mercedes is like, this woman has been more of a mother to me than you have ever been. So I would bag back if I was you, bitch. So you just you should just sit your ass down in the corner somewhere. So they're having conversations and stuff with the ladies in the jail about why they are where they are. And Mercedes tells the women that her mama stole all her money. And everybody looking at her mama like, you stole, you stole her money? She's like, oh, you was like, oh, no wonder she whooped your ass. I mean, I mean, I mean. She stole all that girl's money to open a church. The Lord is just not pleased. I just, oh, the God that I serve, let me be very clear. The God that I serve would, is not going to bless no mess like that. He's, he's just not. He's just not. So, um. Mercedes gets to call, make a phone call finally. Because the phone wasn't working at first. So she finally gets to make a call and she calls Gidget. And begs Gidget to come get her out. And she tells Gidget that her mama stole her money. So the girls go to get her out. But when they go to the bail bondsman's, by the time the bail bondsman stole every fine he can find. Every parking ticket that she owed. And everything. It went from her bail being two grand to five. Now... This is my question. If you go into a bail bondsman, you're only paying 10% of whatever the bail is so the person shows up at court. Why do they have to pay two grand? They got to pay the whole bond? They got to pay the whole bail? Because to get a bond, a bail bondsman, the bail bondsman guarantees the amount, but you pay 10% of whatever the amount was. So if she needed 5000 if the whole thing was 5000 then they only needed to pay 500 to get her out. So I don't understand how that, that doesn't, I bailed plenty. Mm. That ain't make no damn sense. So we then go to um we back in the jail and Mama Patrice starts singing. There's a lily in the valley. If that still bright as the morning star, that still wouldn't excuse you stealing my money. And listen, talk about you got to forgive me. No. No, I don't. Mm-mm. The Lord ain't confirmed nothing about in my spirit. That's not my ministry. Beloved baby, you took it upon yourself to steal all of my money. Therefore, you're going to have to deal with the consequences that come with you stealing all my money. Point blank, period. The end. Um, her singing tends to went over the crowd at the jail, but Mercedes is still like, no. No. So finally, Mercedes gets out and guess who paid her bail? Autumn. And she was like, I got plenty more where that came from. Listen, she's like, they come to a meeting of the minds. Um, Autumn tells her, don't go back to stripping. Um, she's like, you can make some, make your money with me, make your money back and then um, get your gym. And so she says, well, um, what's his name? He can help. Get them some IDs because they need new IDs because uh, under Lakeisha Savage, they can't do any more. She done burnt that ID out. And so they can't do any more transfers with that particular ID. So they start to plan what they're going to do. And that's how that particular episode ended. Um, we then go to episode, started episode six where Autumn and, and Mercedes are like Thelma and Louise. Every 
transfer. They get a different ID with a different picture, with different hair, different names. They just picking up money, picking up money. Like I feel like if they both picking up nine thousand dollars a piece and they hit, they had like seven or eight IDs a piece. Like we and she had already did ten before before they you know cut her off. She got to be almost at two. 200 grand now she's stacking money in the refrigerator she's stacking money in the in the locker in the um at the pink like she's stacking money everywhere so and let me say this <laughs> let me tell you about the pink the uh the the money the money was 20 dollar bills with harriet tubman on it <laughs> that's where i went up i said is that harriet Tubman on the Mondays. Listen, 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 Linda, listen. So, um, we come to find out that that woman who's raising Terica, who's Mercedes' daughter, I thought it was her baby daddy's mama, but it turns out it was his, her baby daddy's wife. the Steve Wilkos is going on that's your baby daddy's wife that got your baby and so both her and Terica are upset Mercedes goes to um, Terica's tennis lesson to talk to her because she's been texting her with no response and so the mother and the, and the, the, the lady who's raising Terica is like, I need you to be able to get your word and keep it because, you know, it's it's heartbreaking and I got to build up when she get broken down when you don't keep your promises to do what you said you was going to do. She said, you got to show consistency if you want me to allow y'all to be in each other's life and all that good stuff. And they have they have a little come to Jesus meeting. Where the mom, where the mama get her right together. So, Mississippi in the last episode saw Uncle Clifford and Lil Murder kissing and stuff, and so Uncle Clifford was about to go get Mercedes, and he and Lil Murder was like, "No, I'ma handle that. I got that." I said, and Uncle Clifford was like, "Okay, we'll be the man." So, um, Lil Murder and Mississippi meet up. Mississippi is obsessed with being famous and viral and all that good stuff. And so, she was like, you don't have no social presence. You got a hot song. We on world star hip hop. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to be a power couple in public, you know. And she really didn't care about. Uncle Clifford and him and them having a relationship or whatever is going on. But he, she's trying to parlay more fame onto herself, more clout. She's chasing clout. And she's trying to get Lil Murder to go along with her plan. And he's down with it if it keeps her mouth shut about her and him and Uncle Clifford. Um, We then meet Uncle Clifford's grandma. Miss Loretta Devine. Um... Who is blind from her diabetes. But when I say she did that. When she said God don't want no head from me. Because I still got my teeth. When I say I laid out on this floor and expired. The Lord had to bring me back. Because I was gone. On the glory to meet him. I was done. Do you hear me? <laughs> she said the Lord don't want no head from me. I still got my teeth. <laughs> so tickled oh my god i love everything about her so little murder is still pressuring uncle clifford like where you you still ain't said where you want me to take you and he was like and um his grandma was like bring him here so that's what uncle clifford does they have a date they have their first date and he comes to meet 
his grandma and they get her high because she she smokes weed she says uh they say smoking weeds bring your sight back she's like that's not true but it sure make you forget that you was blind i said oh okay well all right well that's a thing that happens so we then go to andre trying to close the deal with them the brother signing the, the land over this gets so escalated so quickly like the other brothers are sick of Corbin and his bullshit. They like he pulls a musket on him a uh, musket. <laughs> he pulls the rifle on his ass and be like sign the motherfucking paperwork or I'm gonna kill you. And I was like, "Oh shit. Oh shit." And Corbin was like, "Okay, I'll sign." God damn. They was you playing, you playing with them and they need the money and you playing games and they want their money. And so they pulled a gun. Andre was appalled. I was appalled. I was like, oh shit, this escalated so quickly. Um, but it turns out Andre talks to the white man um, who is over top of this whole project, who's financing this whole project. And when he says that they didn't sign, he was like, well, maybe we need to move on to a different county. And so... Um, Andre talks him into leasing the land to them um, since they already got their ducks in a row for Chuckalisa, and he does it, and he wants to make sure that Chuckalisa benefits from this freaking casino and the jobs that it could provide, and you know all of this good stuff that is supposed to be for this county and city. So. Um, The white boy is still beating the hell out of Mercedes. Uh, and I don't know how she thinks a fake relationship in public with a little murder is going to go over with that boy who clearly is nuts. I don't know how she expects that to work, but we'll figure it out. Um, Autumn and Mercedes have a tender moment. Um, they're at... Mercedes house counting up their money trying to get their last couple of IDs so they can get the last little bit of this money and they have a conversation and uh, Autumn tells um, Mercedes do what you can to make sure that you with your daughter because I want to be with mine and I can't and she tells the story of how um, she searched for her daughter for three days and could not find the baby uh, I don't, did, I don't know the exact circumstance. Maybe there was an accident and like they got the car went off a bridge or they got flooded out or something. But she said the baby was snatched out of her arms and she looked for the baby for three days. And like it's, it was a lot. It was a lot. I was in my feelings about it. I was in my feelings about it. It was it was a whole lot. But um, Mercedes and Autumn are, are really and, and she picked her that name. Autumn is because that was her daughter's name. And so then we see uh, uh, we see um, the baby daddy, Marcavia, Marcus, Montavi, whatever that baby's name is. We see him and he is looking for her. Um, at, at the end of the episode, we see main who i call dark chocolate who's the neighbor who has the bracelet on his leg um he's walking past the store and he sees a missing poster with autumn's name uh, Haley's name on it and her face and so that is how that particular episode ended now they're taking a two-week break the next episode is not until the 30th of august so we got we got plenty of time to speculate as to what's going to happen next. Um, I am still a hundred and ten percent behind Uncle Clifford and Little Murder. I feel like they go. I think like Uncle Clifford is okay with um, using Mercedes as a beard because he doesn't want to be. He doesn't think that it's going to be out in public. But I think. <sighs> Oh, let me let me touch on this because I almost forgot about this. So Gidget's boyfriend is still in town getting head from naked women that are bagging up his drugs and counting the money. And Uncle L comes, Big L comes, and he says, with the pink getting ready to close, you need somebody to hold your dope for you. You know, 
I'm trying to hold something and they make a little deal. Um, and we're going to see how that pans out. Like, I hope he doesn't get in trouble. Like, I really don't. Because I, like, um, I like Uncle L. Uncle L. Uh, but yeah, that is my recap and review for episodes five and six of p valley please like comment and subscribe tell a friend to tell a friend and i will catch you in the next one peace